Welcome to the channel, everybody. My name is Ryan, and this is RimWorld. And we are back at the Waster Colony, looking at the remnants of our last prisoner battle. Looks like Glenn got the worst of it this time. Unfortunately for him, he has no arms and only one leg. So our Itakin definitely had the advantage. He's only missing one arm and a kidney. But um, right now, that's, that's just temporary. We will go ahead and remove the rest of his appendages at some point because these two are basically just gene donors. Um, he, Glenn here, has had his genes taken many times, but uh, Shane is new to the colony, so he, is, uh, he has not ex yet felt the warmth of the gene extractor or the subcore soft scanner. But trust me, he will. He will feel that. And fortunately for Dunnix who had a very bad brain scar in his last encounter and last raid we had, um, we, we, we had a donor, a brain donor show up and willingly give us their brain. So Dunnix has a brand new brain. He's still sedated, so he's going to be under for a little while. Sadly, he still has the same personality, though. Pyro, jealous, nervous, one of the worst colonists we got. But now at least he's got uh, more than a 4 of 10 consciousness, which is what he was at. And our front lines, our little roof trap is looking pretty well. Well completed so this is all done here I mean it's not done we've got a lot of work to do the front lines but I kind of put it on hold for now because we're trying to get our infrastructure up here I'm getting uh, some power plants worked on or at least uh, we're getting the room set up for them we're gonna start with just one I don't think we need four nuclear power generators all at once but you can kind of get a feel for what we're going for and down here i've decided to try and use this room as mainly like an insect we've had several infestations spawn down here so i'd like to wall this one off as you can see we're kind of setting up some walls here i'm going to open it up a little bit more and yeah hopefully the insects will spawn in here and we can keep them contained because it is such a nightmare to hunt them down when we have the fog of war mod on and they go all through our little strip mining operation here oh it's the worst it truly really is but hey that's what we got in for when we installed the fog of war i knew it was going to happen but uh, hey look at this we got ourselves a trader show up uh that's pretty awesome actually what is it combat supplier okay okay well we do have a lot of organs for sale so we'll see what they want sadly most of our trade goods right now are Oop, not trying to rest. No, no, no. Trade. Yeah, most of our trade goods are right now on the road. So we just had a one stop off here at the pig colony. But we're going to go visit several more places with our caravan. They're doing some serious trading over here. But uh, it's going to be a few, probably a season before they get back home. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully no, no violent encounters, but so far so good. Now let's see what these folks have to offer here. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. They've got a bunch of stuff here. Interesting. Well, this is us to sell to them. What do they have? Hmm. Okay, actually, they don't have very much at all, but they've got two low shield packs. Wow. That alone's pretty good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and trade for that, and I'm going to get all their silver, too. But other than that, they don't really have much I want, so I'm still glad they stopped by for those two shields, man. That's killer. Oh man, would you look at this? These traders come to trade with us and then they drag their elephants all the way through our storage room just so they can eat out here. There's literally a table right here. <laughs> I guess there's not enough chairs there for all of them, but thanks for bringing your giant elephants inside and dirtying up the place. Jeez. All right, well, our trade caravan has arrived at its second location here. Sadly, no Resurrector Mech Serums available. We've got a Psychic Shock Lanch I'm going to grab, though. And that's about it. I think we're going to just sell them everything. So we're going to be carrying mostly silver here. But um, you know what? I might grab their advanced components. Um, that's going to leave us with only 1,200. Now let's take the silver, because if we do get a, me a Resurrector Mech Serum, it might be a little bit hard for us to trade for it if we don't have a lot of silver or anything else. So... We'll accept that one. Decent. Now it's time to stop off at the tribe. Just a quick stop. Like I said, just see their inventories. But um, we're, the next big destination are these two towns right here. So I'm anxious to see what they have. 
could fail. We might not end up with any rec resurrector serums, but um, we're going to head home if we if we fail to find any. And the next step will be to search these uh, ruins here. The ancient complexes could possibly have a mech resurrector serum in them. I mean, we visited one before we sent this caravan out and ended up with a stack of luciferium, some glitter world medicine, and I think something else too. But um, it's definitely worth checking because we've got like four of them very close to our city. So I think there might be a possibility there. Uh-oh, here I am just very quietly and mild-manneredly organizing the inventory room here. And look at this, another berserk fight between our prisoners. Let's see who comes out on top. Is it the man with two arms? Yes, the Itakin once again comes out on top. Oh, I'm sorry, he's only got one arm but two legs. That's what it is, that's what it is. Glenn, unfortunately, has very little, very little left. But you know what he does have? He's got plenty of genes that we can scan Seven days till they regrow, but this guy's a fresh boy. You know what? I think it's about time to stick him in there. I don't think they need to be fully healed for us to do that. So no, no, not at all. Yeah, let's get our first set of genes from this boy. I mean, he's he's winning enough fights. Obviously, he's got good genes. So let's take those for ourselves. Well, you know what? After discovering nuclear power, I think it's about time we get serious about fire safety. So here we go. The fire foam popper is now on the list. And this is coming along quite nicely. In fact, we've cleared the room. I think it's time to get our first order filled here for nuclear power. Now, I've got Emma. She's being forced. Uh, she's working on bionics. I'm kind of making that her priority. Now she's going to bed. But, uh, oh, hey, look at this. So we got uh, our next trade caravan pop up. Awesome. Let's see what they've got. They got a dog. You know, I actually really want the dog. That'll help us with uh, our animal training for sure. Because we do have one person, uh, I think it's Hero, who has the ability. Well, he's got one passion in it, so he's like our only hope for <laughs> taming animals again. But um, I think a dog will help him. So let's see here. Medicine. Of course, what we're looking for is death rask capacity. This is an interesting one. We could make uh, one of our characters the, um, I don't know what you call it, the death rest gene which essentially turns them into some sort of like super powered individual. But uh, I'm not too sure about that. Actually, I haven't played with that one, that type before, but this was just a stop off to see if they've got any healing or resurrect or mech serums. But see, this is good. This is to me, this is a good sign that these, these towns could possibly have them. It's just, they don't have it right now, but uh, let's see. Side trainer burden. I mean, they have a lot of good stuff that I'd like to grab maybe, but I think ultimately we're just going to move on to the next one and hope again that they might have what we need but no worries no worries let's see we've already got a bunch of good stuff from them and i think if the last place let's buy the husky yeah if the last place doesn't have the resurrector what we'll do is we'll just buy out all their components and stuff and head home all right well check this out we just finished shane's um gene extraction and we got roar voice so that's, isn't that what gives them the ability to do their little animal call? Oh, that's pretty awesome. Let's view roar voice. Carries the, carriers have an animal-like roaring voice. Interesting, because I know Etikins have that ability. They can, like, like turn one animal in nearby on the map, like, for, on their side temporarily. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Eventually, I'm actually, before I switched over to Fire Foam, we were working on genetics. So I'm going to start, you can see we're about halfway through altercation. So I am going to start making that push now that we've got power independence. Well, very shortly here, once this is up and running, we will be completely power independent. And I will probably deconstruct these things. I don't know. Maybe I'll leave them up. But uh, we won't need them, I guarantee it, after a while. But that is probably the goal for now. And, boy, boy, I'd like to get another couple of people. Maybe a dirt mole. That would be interesting. But the e was really a great find for that reason. Oh, look at this. We've got some visitors. Oh, yes, and check it out. See, they spawn from this corner of the map here. I was worried about that. This little patch right here was all covered up under the mountain. And I discovered it while doing some strip mining, in case you missed that. So that was a big concern for me, because ultimately it was another way into the base. But what I did was I, I dug a little passageway through the mountain to the greater map at large here. 
so that this little section, if it spawned raiders or something, they wouldn't necessarily break through right away. You know, they'd maybe be lured around to the front, but looks like it's working. These guys are certainly coming around to the front. Of course, they're not hostile, but hey, it's the best we can hope for right now. Okay, well, here it is. We have arrived at our final stop, and looking through, after just doing a cursory glance here, it doesn't appear to be any resurrector max serums this is our belt here but uh that's okay like i said i was prepared for the disappointment it was a it was a long shot but worth it so i think like i said i'm just going to come up to the top and grab all their components yeah that actually almost wipes us out so maybe i'll give them some of our pemmican or something here just to balance it out a little bit but that's going to do it for this caravan time to bring them on home all right well take a look at this we've got a group of uh psychically sensitive individuals praying here at the shriveled old toxic tree looks like sienna's got herself a new ability what is it what is it sienna manhunter pulse well that would be really really helpful if we had a single animal out here on the map but if we look at the wildlife tab there's literally none none whatsoever yep we've had a uh, toxic waste cloud permeating the environment toxic spewer here for months and months and months so there's no trees no animals on the map that's why i think caravanning and buying some is so important but uh i mean it's still good if we send her on like a caravan or something and she gets attacked you know that might be helpful you know and one day i might decide to go ahead and destroy this bad boy right here it's just you know it really has no negative effect for us other than completely wiping the map of all other life forms of course and here we go sun is putting the finishing touches on our nuclear power generator that's beautiful it's already hooked up i, I installed all the uh, power lines and oh look she she quit all the job wasn't finished emma get down here oh uh, wait dunnix is coming oh god dunnix what's your skill level 15 dunnix i have got serious questions about you my friend son i want you to come back screw dunnix i'm sorry oh social fight Social fight. Who is it? Big versus Snuff. Uh-oh. What do you got, Big? Let's see it. Snuff's literally wearing a shield right now, so that might not be a good move. All right, what do you got? Let's see. Who's going to win? Big's bleeding, folks. B big. Oh. oh, okay. They called it a draw. Oh, well, that was kind of anticlimactic, wasn't it? All right, well, back to the nuclear power generator. I'll tell you, those social fights, they're constant. Non-stop around this place. Do not fail, son. Yes, there we go. All right, so it is up and running. We've just got to get somebody to already fueling nuclear generator. Good job, Sienna. She's on top of it. So you can see it holds uh, 200 maximum uranium, and that's good for like two years worth or so. Once we get it maximally, once I fill it up to the limit here, we'll, we'll come back and check it again. And I'll show you exactly how much that's worth in terms of power. All right, well, there we go. It definitely took Sienna a couple trips. I had to order her to do it like four different times to fill it up completely, but we're at 200 to 200. So this generator will now output 26,000 watts for 3.3 years without needing to be refilled again until that time. So there you go, that's a pretty sweet little generator. And this comes from, if we look at it, the Advanced Power Plus mod. I like this one a lot. Um, I know that there's a, like the Rim Atomics one. It's a much more in-depth. You've got to go through a whole like much more deep research tree and stuff. So if you want to focus on like, you know, um, a radiation playthrough, that's the way to go too. And now that I think about it, it might have fit well with this kind of toxic waste to play through. But I went with this one. It's much more simple. As you can see, the, you know, you just go right to it. It doesn't make uranium like deadly to your colonists or anything out. And you can also also work on things like the advanced wind turbine solar power geothermal these things these advanced ones are good uh, they put out a lot more than the standard but they do take advanced components and plasteel to build them once you've researched it so usually what I've learned to do is just go straight for nuclear power I really won't even use these probably anymore down here we just uh, oh look at that. another social fight let's go watch so that, that's just a rundown of the power situation, which we will never have to worry about ever again, thanks to the nuke. There we go. Come on, heroes. <laughs> These guys are our melee dudes. What are they doing? They're both our melee people. Let's see, heroes, they're a 14 and a 16. They're testing their might. 
Let's actually see what was the cause of this. Missile derided Hero's diet. This drove Hero into a rage. What the hell are you talking about, Missile? You guys eat literally the same food. Oh my god. Another draw, folks. Another draw. Oh my god. I'm not even kidding. Literally seconds later, after the last fight, these two folks get into a fight. What was it about? Dunnix compared Raider to a dragon. What? Dude, bro, that's a compliment. This drove Raider into a rage and he began to fight. Well, you're not really helping your argument by going into a rage if somebody calls you a dragon, bro. But, I mean, come on. I don't understand this fight at all. It's more or less. He maybe called him like a, a white dragon or something. Yeah, probably like a little coward dragon. Who knows? These two are crazy. Oh, there we go. And Dunnix lost the match. Let's see. You didn't get a brain scar, did you? No. He'll live. All right. Well, this is bad news. We got both prisoners awake, uninjured, and wandering around in the cell. So what I've done here is I like to set up a whole bunch of orders for psychite tea. That's what all these are, are just orders to administer psychite. Because what that'll do is it'll force the patient to go lay down in their bed, treat it as an operation, basically. They're going to go lay down until somebody comes and administers psychite tea to them. Now, Shane just laid down on his own there randomly, but I've also got a whole list set up too for him. So I typically do that with prisoners I plan on keeping around a while. And also, of course, it helps the mood too. If you do it, you know, it'll boost their mood for a short time, as long as they're not teetotalers or something like that. But um, it doesn't interfere at all with the gene extraction in any way. And like I said, it's kind of a good way, if you see him up and around, to force him to lay back down in bed. Now, I've got him set up. He's ordered to go do a soft score, a soft core scan real quick. But while I'm waiting for a person to come around, we're going to order up some operations here on this guy. Um, I, I want to leave him his spine because I do want him to walk around. He needs to be ambulatory so that we can do like a ritual on him if we want or something. But let's go ahead and take his eyes out and we will go ahead and harvest the right shoulder and one of the legs. So he's going to be like Glenn, just hopping around on one leg with no arms. Oh man, I tell you, our hospital is quite full here with all these people getting into social fights and stuff. But uh, speaking of only having one leg, Lottie, who has been hopping around on one leg for a while, is finally going to get two bionics upgraded. So, okay, she's at the good medicine level. Let's make sure Emma does this. Beating Stu to Raider. Yeah, prioritize operating on Lottie next, please. So I've put a shelf over here in the hospital with where we store all our constructed bionics and stuff it makes it a little bit easier normally i would set up like an entire stockpile next to the hospital but then i was thinking about it and i was like you know what one of these very big shelves is like perfect for that so that was uh the purpose there and looks like lottie oh dang it emma the best surgeon in the colony failed and of course she failed on the leg which was missing not the good leg. So I just went ahead and replaced both legs, you know, the good one and the one that was missing. But she failed on the le the right leg. Oh, you got to be kidding me with these people. All right, so I've got to get another leg constructed. Luckily, Emma is in the works. But man, oh man, can you believe it? Of course. All right, well, what a happy coincidence that is. We actually discovered some uranium ore right next to our nuclear power, but uh, it's too late. It's already full. No worries, no worries. Um, let's check on our caravan progress. They are very close to home now, folks. Can't wait for these guys to return. Question is, who should we give that Resurrector mech sir, uh, belt to, this Resurrector buy? That probably is going to go on, like, Snuff or maybe Emma, honestly, since she is our best doctor. I mean, look at her. She's got literally five skills that are in the 20s, and not to mention she's working on her six skills. So she is probably the most valuable. And let's see here. Yeah, in terms of bionics, she's got a ton of stuff on her tactical bionic eye. So she's very valuable. I think she'll be our one as the Mechanator, too. That'll be good because if she were to die, all the mechs would just completely go haywire. So giving her a second chance at life, I think, is the, probably the smart move. And Glenn is up and walking around again. Oh, boy. Well, that's okay. That's okay. It looks like we got another leg available. There we go. Emma's really on top of it. So I've got to wait till Lottie fully heals, but we're going to try that again. So let's see what he's doing. Uh, Gene's regrowing. All right, I tell you what. We'll go ahead and scan his brain 
just so he's uh, off his feet and not causing any trouble right now, that little Neanderthal. And you're probably wondering what I'm going to do with all these sub-cores that we've got scanned. I've got five already, and there's a sixth one on the way now with our Neanderthal. But I've actually ordered at least four more pikemen's, and I think that will, after that, we're going to start getting some scythers pumped out too. I mean, they're really cheap. These are some of the cheaper ones. Scorchers, I don't know, maybe. Maybe. The thing with Scorchers is really, like, I can handle humanoid raids pretty easily just with, you know, psychic pulsers or whatever, but the mech raids are really where it's at, where you need, like, the big me uh, army, mech versus mech, really. And Scorchers are pointless for that. You know, mechs have complete immunity to fire, so I feel like Scorchers kind of waste of time. I don't need them. And uh, they're not effective against what we really are threatened by. So there's our fire foam popper all done. Let's real quickly look through some of this other stuff before we focus on genetics. So the repairing's cool. This is like what helps us repair um, uh, scars and things of that nature. But I'm at the point now where I'm just like, well, let's just replace the whole organ or whatever with some bionics. But what should we do? Compact weaponry? No. Skin hardening would be good, but I'd really probably only install that in our two melee people for now. Brain surgery, no. Advanced is good, but we don't have the person dedicated to crafting it, so. All right, I say we'll stick with the genetics. Let's do it. Let's start diving into the manipulation of genes and stuff. As you can see, I've really started to expand our gene storage area here. We've got a few more that we can go into. What the hell is this? Dang, gosh dang clean sweep over here. What are you doing, dude? Oh, he's shut down because of low energy. You know what? I think I turned one of these off. Yeah, that was my bad. I switched one of those off when we were hurting for power. But guess what? We are no longer hurting for power ever again. So I'm going to go through and actually switch all the stuff on. It's time to stop conserving power, baby. We're just going to go full blaze here with all our electricity. Let's see. Yep, yeah, turn that on. I've got four of these down here. It's pointless too. I don't I don't even plan on setting these up right away, but we're we're going full. Going full power mode. I think I've got some stuff in here too. Yep, switching on folks. We're going live. There we go. Uh-oh. It's happened again. We got a berserk dude and he just broke out the camera. Who knows what he's up to? Oh, look at that. Missile has arrived. Well, get on a missile. Fist only though, buddy. Fist only. Melee attack him. Of course, this guy has no arms anymore. I think we took his eyeballs, too. Yeah. Poor little Itakin. It's going to happen. I mean, it's a very feeble Berserk Rage, but it is a Berserk Rage nonetheless. So we have to deal with it appropriately. There we go. He's back. <laughs> back out of action. It's, it's very, very unfortunate what's happened to those folks. But there we go. Look at this. The long-awaited caravan has almost arrived home. I think by the next episode, they will be here. Returning heroes come back with their goods. I can't wait for that moment, guys. I hope you will join me. Uh-oh, check it out. Oh, no. I can't believe it. I have to eat my words, literally. The caravan has just encountered a threat, guys. Uh-oh. Well, tune in tomorrow to find out if we can save our caravan here. They were on the last leg of their journey. Hit that like and subscribe, guys, if you're enjoying the playthrough, and I will see you on the next one.